Hello and welcome to my next tutorial about Prepomix. A new version of this software came out today and the biggest new feature is support for two-dimensional analysis. And in this tutorial I would like to show you how to perform a plane stress analysis on a U-shaped member. Let's create a new model first and now you can see that there's a difference in this window because apart from selecting a unit system type you have to also select model space. So this can be 3D or 2D and this is either plane stress, plane strain or axisymmetric. And for today uh, we will need a plane stress type. So we'll choose this one and millimeters uh, standard unit system. Uh, and uh, let's import the geometry as always. As you can see, uh, the geometry that I import is like a shell. It's a flat geometry kind of surface. Uh, and this was prepared in FreeCAD mm, and I will show you how this model was prepared. Uh, I had to do some uh, non-usual operations. Uh, I created a sketch first, uh, and that's the sketch with some additional construction lines to, to let me measure various dimensions for the analytical solution. Uh, anyway, that's, that's the, the sketch. Uh, then uh, I extruded it uh, in actually padded because that's how it's called in FreeCAD. Uh, and then I used uh, draft module uh, and its option to uh, downgrade uh, the uh, downgrade uh, the um, uh, geometry, and this created uh, multiple faces. I deleted all the faces apart from this one here, uh, and then I had to do one more thing uh, because. Uh, if I import the part right after downgrading it, uh, this will be uh, incorrect geometry. And if I import it to Prepomex, then uh, the normals of the elements generated for this part will be inverted. So in order to avoid this, uh, I have to perform some additional operation. Uh, this is important. Uh, I have to go to a part module uh, and uh, select this, this face and use the tool to uh, reverse shapes. And then if I export the reverse shape, the part will be uh, correctly imported and I will be able to generate the mesh properly. Uh, so that's it when it comes to the preparation of, of this part. Uh, also keep in mind that uh, in order to create uh, two-dimensional models in, in Prepomex, in Calculex in general, uh, you have to draw them on XY plane, so the z-coordinate have to be uh, zero. Uh, and uh, that's pretty much it for uh, plane stress models. Um, for axisymmetric models there are some special considerations in addition to the one discussed here, but we will go uh, to that later on. Uh, so now let's create a mesh for this part. Uh, I will specify uh, maximum element size of one millimeter, and now I will mesh this part. Mm, I should also mention that uh, two-dimensional heat transfer analysis are also possible in Prepomex now. Uh, but we will go to that uh, in the ne future tutorials. Mm, now let, let's focus on, on this example of plane stress analysis. Mm, and uh, now I will create a node set uh, for this uh, hole uh, number one. Uh, I will choose the uh, edge angle uh, base selection and I will pick uh, this edge here. This will select the whole, uh, the whole um, hole right here. Uh, let's uh, confirm this and I will uh, choose, I will create another uh, node set and this will be mm, done in the same uh, way uh, but for this hole right here uh, and let's uh, confirm this now. Now we have two sets so that we can use for uh, loading. Uh, let's create reference points now. Uh, I will choose the, the method to uh, create them by center of gravity and I'll specify node set name. This will be hole one for the first uh, hole and this will the, the reference point will be placed right in the middle. Uh, let's confirm and now I'll do the same for uh, the second node set and uh, the reference point will be created in the uh, correct position. Now let's create uh, rigid body constraints because that's why we needed the reference uh, points. You can notice that there are some additional constraints, point and surface springs. Uh, we will also discuss them later on. Let's uh, create a rigid body constraint now. Uh, I will specify the node set name and this will be the first rigid body constraint. And the second one will use the reference point number two and uh, node set number uh, two. Uh, so we have the rigid body constraints defined now. So let's proceed to uh, material definition, uh, something we uh, always have to do, of course. Uh, so this will be standard steel material. 
Uh, and now I have to define a section and there's a difference because uh, now even though it's a solid section, not shell section, and by the way you can also notice that membrane sections are now available, uh, I have to specify thickness even though it's a solid section. Because we are in a two-dimensional uh, analysis, it's a plain, straight case, plain stress case, so I have to specify thickness. Uh, thickness in this case will be uh, 5 millimeters. Mm, so I will confirm this now. Uh, and I just have to create a step. Uh, this will be standard static step, nothing changed here. Uh, and uh, let's create uh, loads and boundary conditions for this analysis. Uh, let's start from loads. Uh, I will use concentrated forces applied to reference points. Uh, let's pick reference point number one and the magnitude will be 2000 newtons. Uh, that's for the first reference point and now uh, the same for the uh, second reference point, uh, the same magnitude but uh, in opposite direction. Uh, so we will have uh, such uh, two forces. Mm, now let's define boundary conditions. Uh, I will specify displacement rotation boundary condition. I can hide the mesh for now. Uh, and um, I will use so-called 3 to 1 method. Uh, actually, in this case, it's, it's not full 3 to 1 method because it's a two-dimensional case, uh, but you can call this also minimal constraint method. Uh, and uh, anyway, uh, that's a special uh, way of constraining models uh, to avoid rigid body motions. You can read about it in various uh, articles online. Uh, it's an interesting approach to uh, boundary conditions in FEA. Uh, so let's constrain this point uh, only in Y direction. Uh, and uh, this point right here, uh, in both X and Y direction. So now the model is uh, prepared uh, and I can submit the analysis like we always did. As you can see, the results are already, uh, already available. Uh, the analysis was uh, really short. Uh, that's thanks to the uh, use of uh, two-dimensional uh, approximation. Uh, if it was 3D, it would take much more time. Uh, anyway, uh, here are the results, the stresses, we are interested in maximum stresses. Let's check the analytical solution. Uh, here you can see the dimensions of, of the whole uh, part. Uh, and uh, the analytical solution is based on Peterson's stress concentration factors. Uh, and here are the uh, two stresses that we expect to, uh, to, uh, to find in the analysis. Uh, sigma A uh, is for uh, this section, while B is for this uh, section aligned like this. So let's uh, the the angle here is uh, 20 degrees. I should have mentioned this. Uh, so let's go back to uh, to the analysis and use the uh, typical query tool mm, to measure the uh, the stresses uh, in those two uh, locations that I've shown you before. The stress here uh, is, as you can see, around uh, the expected value. It's pretty close. Uh, a bit lower, but uh, but pretty close to uh, what we expected from from the theoretical solution. So now, now let's check the other value. Uh, this is uh, somewhere uh, here. Mm, we can choose uh, few a few points around this location because we can't be sure uh, where is the the angle of 20 degrees. So let's check a, a few points around this location. Uh, and you can see that we are, uh, if, if we check the, if we select the, the points on this perimeter, uh, then we are pretty close to, uh, to what we expected uh, from this uh, analytical solution. Uh, there was one point where the value was, was very close here. Mm, so that's uh, how we can compare this to, to the analytical solution. I can also show you one more thing uh, if you want, because f for now uh, the results are, are displayed like this, uh, it's, since it's a two-dimensional two analysis. But if you want to uh, to e extrude it or see the, the actual thickness, uh, then you can go to field outputs, element uh, field output, uh, and uh, you can choose a three-dimensional output here. Uh, and you will notice what happens when I uh, submit this analysis once again. And now you can see uh, that the results are displayed in three dimensions, uh, accounting for the uh, thickness. So uh, that's it for this Pripomax tutorial. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. Uh, as always, feel free to ask any questions and suggest topics for future tutorials in the comments. Have a nice day and see you in the next video.